Hi, my name is Carl Atenieze and I'd like to talk to you about what we think is true. You may hear me use some of the buzzwords that superstitious people use in this talk, but I try to avoid them. One of those words that I think we should avoid when seeking truth and righteousness, reason, science, and trying to discuss real-world issues that are confounded by superstition is belief. I consider belief a useful word in the English language and a language which used to be helpful, but now I find it deleterious. In discussions about superstition and science, history and reality, when you're talking to a superstitious person, this person will use the word belief innocuously or seemingly so, or think so. But the word is a conversation stopper, because what has happened throughout time, resulting in the present zeitgeist, is that the word belief has barriers around it. It is a concept protecting and politically correct word which enables people to fence themselves in from the truth and reason and intellectual honesty. So I don't use it anymore. When I would normally want to have said in the past, do you believe in such and such, I didn't have problems with using the word. But after writing essays and listening to many podcasts and reading many books on superstitious organizations and superstitious forms of thought, often referred to with the word religion, I discovered that the word and the word religion have become harmful to cognition and honest speech. So now I will say, do you believe that such and such is true? Or rather, <laughs> I did it myself. I fell victim to the programming of a lifetime. I'm trying to change my vocabulary and change my cognition so I can change conversation and keep people honest. I will say, do you think such and such is true? or I don't think such and such is true. I've changed the way I speak in other areas, and mind you, I did this before I read Dr. Timothy Snyder's book on tyranny, in which he advises that people start speaking originally, because language has a way of controlling our minds. All you need to do is live in another culture for a little longer than a decade to see how language shapes cognition. You don't have to do some self-reflective study of your own culture and language. It's much easier if you live in another place, minus, of course, the trouble of moving to another country. Anyway, when people say, do you believe in God, for example, and I no longer use the word God either, I use gods, to point out that they are believing in one, usually the Abrahamic one, which originally came from a polytheistic pantheon, but they don't know that, um, I do this to have them realize that their God is one of many. And I'm not submitting to this paradigm that's been forced on us, that there is one God. It's a preposterous idea. So when they ask me questions such as, do you believe in God? I invariably answer, which God do you mean? And I don't do that to be a wise ass. I do that to point out to them that I'm not submitting to their one God paradigm, which is their own personal superstition. Or I will say, what do you mean by believe? Do you mean, do I think that a particular God exists? You see, because if someone asks you, do you believe in God? Invariably, what they have done and you have fallen victim to is the idea, the preconception, the preconceived notion the, the syllogism that you're accepting that this God already exists and that the question is, do you trust in him or her or it or them? So I do this only because I love humanity. And if you love humanity, you love truth because the only way to preserve humanity in the microcosm or the macrocosm in the, minu in the minutia or in galaxy-sized decisions is to stay focused on the truth. That's why science is a truth-based endeavor to discover reality and its conditions and its properties.
and everything else. So the conclusion I'm drawing and have drawn and what I'm trying to convey to you is if you want to have honest conversations with people because you love the truth, because you love humanity and you want us to thrive, you have to redesign how you speak the language because the language over time has become corrupted. So I don't use the word religion. I use suspicious par um, superstitious paradigm. It's suspicious also. I don't use the word believe and all of the heavy baggage that goes along with it and the political correctness and the conversation stopping. I use the phrase think is true or think is not true or accept the reality of or accept the evidence of or deny the evidence of. Um, and I generally pull back the reins on the conversation because these conversations are inor inordinately controlled by the superstitious people. Okay? Um, if you speak more honestly and you shy away from or refrain from using the words which control the conversation, which favor their argument, you will force them to begin to question what they're forcing on you. And this is a good thing because then they will start thinking about what they're actually regurgitating instead of regurgitating it. Now let me collect myself here to see if there was anything else I wanted to say about this. All of this today is inspired by the fact that I watched a live broadcast of a Women for Roy Moore Alabama Facebook live press conference where these theocrats in Alabama uh, were asserting that they think Roy Moore would be good for our government. This is a man who was twice removed from the bench as a judge. He is known to have solicited teenagers. This is probably because of his superstitious beliefs. In the Bible, in the Talmud, and in the Quran, men can marry underage women, children. Um, he's also been accused of uh, sexual advances and sexual abuse of women. This hasn't been proved yet, but multiple sources, you can find this on Wikipedia, have alleged that they have seen him in various situations coming on to young girls. He believes in putting the Ten Commandments on the courthouse wall. For this and for his refusal to abide the law, he was removed from his position in government. He believes in banning um, marriage equality. So this is a theocrat. And as you know, and if you don't, I'll inform you, theocracy is the enemy of egalitarian democratic republic. This is a secular democracy. We have a separation of church and state because the founding fathers virtually worshipped the Greek and Roman philosophers who came up with the idea of republic. Now, they didn't all agree with democracy for the reason that we're facing today. Idiots like this getting into government. Idiots like Donald Trump. Unscrupulous, delusional, self, um, self, self deluding uh, religious people who would like to control your life rather than set you free. Uh, people who don't believe in science, people who deny the human uh, hand in climate change. So um, I'll make one last note while I stop here. If you want to know what the problem is in America, it's education. We educate our youth to have a bicameral mind, a dichotomous mind, a schizoid mind. On the one hand, we tell them to respect reason and evidence and honesty. And on the other, we tell them to respect religions, which are the exact antithesis of this. They're based on fantasy. They're superstitious paradigms. They teach things that go contrary to what we know about science and reality, and therefore they make their adherents dishonest. And over the time that it takes for people to begin to justify their dishonesty, they don't realize it anymore, and they just become cognitively dissonant, which is the pathway to neurosis and mental illness. And this is why I asserted several years ago, before others started saying it recently, that people affiliated with the Republican Party are more or less mentally ill. So, if you want to combat this because you love humanity, and therefore you love truth, and you support science and reason and intellectual honesty, change the way you talk.
don't use the word religion, use superstitious paradigm. If somebody says, are you religious? Say, no, I'm not superstitious. If somebody says, do you believe in God? Say, which one? And by the way, what do you mean by believe? Do I trust in this thing for which there's no proof? No, I don't trust it. I don't think it exists in the first place. Would you like to discuss it and tell me that I'm wrong? Um, and don't vote for people who want theocracy. These are the American Taliban. Have a nice day. And reason bless America.